Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Modernizing Active Directory Management. We've got a great presentation prepared today to talk more about AD administration methods that return both hybrid security and efficiency benefits. With us today, we have KOSOF founder Robert Bobel, who I'll be introducing momentarily. But before we get started, if everyone could take a quick moment to follow us on social media, you'll see here on the screen a QR code for each of your favorite social networks. With your phone's camera, you can scan that little box below and it will take you directly to our social pages. From there, you can follow us for our latest product update and related industry news. So let's get started. I'm McKenna. I work alongside the Microsoft experts here at Geosoft. Just a couple housekeeping items to go over before we jump into the presentation. First off, you'll notice your microphones are muted to make sure everyone has the optimal listening experience. But we do encourage you to ask any questions you may have. So depending on how you join today, either in browser or through the app, you'll notice a question or chat section in your meeting dashboard. Feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll do our best to answer them. If we run short on time today for questions, we'll reach out to you individually to follow up. While you're in your meeting dashboard, also make sure to check out the handout section where we've included additional resources you can download and share with your team. This session will also be recorded and we'll email you a link in the days following. At the end of the presentation, we'll also be sharing our contact information. So if you have any additional questions or you're watching this on demand, please feel free to reach out. Well, now that we've got all that taken care of, let's go ahead and jump in. So today we have with us the founder of Chaosoft, Robert Bobel. Bob hello, is hello. one of the, and there he is. <laughs> he is one of the <laughs> leading experts in hybrid active directory management and recovery. And with more than 25 years in the Microsoft identity industry, he has tons of insight and best practices to share. So you guys are in great hands today. And on that note, I'll pass it over to Bob. Awesome. Thank you, McKenna. Before we get started, I want to point out why we chose to talk about hybrid active directory management. If you're not familiar with hybrid Active Directory management, now is your chance to be on the inside with the cool kids. Hybrid Active Directory simply means the legacy Active Directory, which runs on domain controllers and is typically on premise, and that has a client server method that they use to authenticate user accounts and then authorize access. And the convergence with Azure Active Directory and Office 365 in the cloud. And in fact, the two are integrated. I would say lightly integrated through a synchronization process that Microsoft provides through a little utility to take your user accounts that are on-premise and move them to the cloud. Hybrid Active Directory represents the number one way enterprises are running their networks today. And so it's critical to understand that Active Directory user accounts and their passwords for authenticating your users and the groups that are used to authorize access to resources for your entire organization all reside within both on-premise Active Directory and Azure Active Directory, collectively known as hybrid Active Directory. Now, the interesting part about that is it becomes the keys to your kingdom. Once somebody is in Active Directory and able to authenticate the user account, then they're on the inside of the environment. And if there are anything that could be considered a weakness, they may figure it out and learn to exploit it. And so Active Directory and Azure Active Directory have to be treated as critical and in fact, mission critical components, and they must be made resilient based on several things that need to happen within the environment going way beyond what is simply provided by Microsoft. Now, because the keys to your kingdom really are the usernames and passwords, you have to understand that because access is granted through Active Directory, it also is the treasure map to where all the goodies are stored across your environment. It also provides a route for gaining access to those things. And so not only is it there to check to make sure your users are who they say they are, but it also then is there to facilitate your users accessing simple things, Word documents, the company database, you know, the secret plans for the next version of Coca-Cola, whatever it might be, it controls all access to the resources, applications, and data that people need on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we talk about a hybrid Active Directory and that the convergence of both on-premise Active Directory, the older client server legacy model, plus the uh, synchronization with Azure Active Directory, which is a web services model, it really serves to extend the life 
and the reach and authority of the legacy Active Directory that you've had in place for 25 years. And so it just became more critical. And the other difficult piece is that you now have two environments you have to worry about, not just one. Sure, synchronizing helps a little bit, but frankly, that's just some more overhead. You have to maintain synchronization, make sure it's working, and then worry about all the things that that entails as well. And it's critical to understand that Active Directory just simply can't go down. Because when you have a hybrid Active Directory outage, your users start to complain because they can no longer do their jobs, right? They can't access the resource, the applications, the data they need to connect with your customers, to make sure orders are being fulfilled. And when they start complaining, then your management will start complaining. And so if you're responsible for Microsoft identities, that's hybrid Active Directory within your environment, if you have an outage, either due through administrative mistakes because native tools aren't enough or because somebody breached your environment because you missed a setting or somebody hacked your environment through some zero-day fault, when Active Directory is unavailable, you get it from both sides. You get it from the management, senior, senior management, the head of the company, all the way down through the people you directly report to. Then you also get pressure from the end user community who can't do their jobs. Customers are screaming at them. They're trying to work on the manufacturing shop floor and they can't, or they may be not able to complete sales, which costs them real money, et cetera. So it's important to understand that Active Directory outages are painful and costly, and you want to avoid them at all costs. Here are three quick quotes highlighting just how topical this subject is at the moment. Frost and Sullivan estimates that 90% of global Fortune 100 companies use Active Directory as their primary authentication and authorization tool, authentication, login, authorization, access to resources. Security Boulevard, Active Directory is the most valuable target for cyber attackers because it handles the authentication across all your enterprises and touches everything in your network. A lot of organizations have door badges, you know, that you have to carry with you to get into the doors. Sometimes those are connected to Active Directory. I've seen telephone systems connected to Active Directory. Your email is connected to Active Directory. Virtually everything we do has to be checked to make sure you're who you say you are. And so an outage is disastrous when it occurs. Active Directory is complicated. There are lots of touch points, lots of things that over time can be neglected easily. And over time, we learn more about how people are attacking Active Directory. And so red teams estimate that when they go to attack Active Directory, they are successful 100% of the time if they have nothing in the way to protect that directory. So you want to be careful there. And it starts with management, quite frankly. So why is Active Directory so complex, and especially hybrid Active Directory? Well, hybrid Active Directory native tools virtually non-existent. So this is basically what you get. You get a bunch of consoles that are legacy on-premise consoles. You have PowerShell, you have ADSI edit you might need. Those are all directory tools, utilities. There are no such thing as roles on-premise. There are security ACLs in the cloud. You have another set of interfaces to manage users and groups. And then there are rules when they connect the two that if I need to change an email address, I can't do it on the mailbox in the cloud. I have to do it on-premise and let it synchronize. And it's just a jumbled mess. And it goes back to why all this happened. And you have to understand that Microsoft's initial target for Office 365 was what drove their cloud growth and drove Azure Active Directory. And it was being built to fight Google and Google Docs or Google Workspace, whatever you want to call it nowadays. And that was being adopted by smaller and some mid-sized businesses. Rarely wasn't an enterprise play. And so Microsoft rushed to get to cloud and then on top of that, they had Amazon, who was chewing up the server market, and that's how their applications on the enterprise side were deployed. And so half of Microsoft's revenue was potentially under pressure from Amazon and Google. And so this is what we ended up with. And it is getting better, but it's very slow. And you probably, because of the danger involved with losing your hybrid Active Directory, mistakes, malicious changes, you probably don't want to wait. So how do you secure and protect hybrid Active Directory? How do you manage this thing, right? Well, there are three sort of sides to hybrid AD management. So if you look in the middle here, you see the basic platforms we're talking about. We're talking about Active Directory, Azure Active Directory. We're talking about Office 365. And yes, the applications that go along with that are important too. Microsoft Teams with work from home. I really wanted to use the term hybrid work, but I'm going to just say remote work really became a critical tool for people especially around collaboration. So you have these three or four platforms 
Teams is actually part of Office. We kind of consider it that way. But you have these platforms that are absolutely massive and you really are being driven by collaboration, right? Email went to the cloud. Now people are doing SharePoint and Teams. You need to make it resilient so that it's available to the people and so they can perform their jobs and your organization can continue to function. But honestly, it all comes back to identity. It, it comes back to protecting those identities and making sure they're working. If a single application is hacked, that application goes down, it's an isolated portion of your business. I'm not saying it isn't critical, but it's one application. If Active Directory goes down or is compromised, everything is compromised. So you need to be able to do basically three things. First of all, you need a better approach to managing the environment. You need to constantly monitor for changes and for unresolved threats so that you can see, potentially see suspicious changes or unwanted changes and roll those back. Well, wait a minute, how do you roll them back? Well, you need a recovery process at every step of the way. And there is no good enterprise class management solution in hybrid AD. There's a Microsoft Sentinel. For a few dollars more, you can buy Sentinel. Unfortunately, it's based on event data for monitoring. And if somebody is attacking your environment, the first thing they're gonna do is shut down your events or modify them. Or maybe you get unlucky and find out that particular change that somebody is using doesn't get event logged. We have several that are like that, especially in AD and Azure AD. And then finally, inside of both Active Directory on-premise and cloud, you get something called recycle bins. Think of a recycle bin as undelete. That is all it does. It's not undo, it's simply undelete, which means if you delete something, you can bring it back, assuming you have it all enabled and it's all working. It's time limited to 30 days in the cloud in Azure AD, and it's time limited on-premise to about a year if you have it configured properly. But that doesn't take care of changes. If somebody goes in, writes a script, and wipes out all of the group memberships, that's not a deletion. That's a change to attribute data. It is not covered by recycle bins. That is the number one thing that we see causing outages. Somebody writes a script or you know, goes out and inadvertently clears a group membership or a role, or they change some small aspect, and that becomes an unwanted change. Whether it's malicious or not, it's a different story but you need some way to roll that back. And that just does not exist from Microsoft. So to really secure and protect hybrid Active Directory, you need to manage it, monitor it for change, and then prepare for recovery up front because you can't prepare for recovery after the fact. Now you have these three balls you have to juggle. I love this, it looks kind of like the clown noses that you'd see, but you have these three things you have to juggle. And it's important to understand that each one of those is sort of like a coin and there are two sides to that coin. So with management, you have just the basic administration creating a user account, tearing a user account down, adding somebody to a group through a help desk request or whatever it might be. But then you have governance that has to be applied because we don't all work in a vacuum. Your industry may be subject to legal or regulatory requirements. Sarbanes-Oxley here in the United States for publicly traded companies, HIPAA, Healthcare Information Portability Act, protecting patient information. And so the other side of the administration coin is definitely governance. And both are there as part of that same process set. So when you invest in administration, you're going to want to make sure that as you select tools and methods and processes, that they also support your governance mission. You'll improve your efficiency, especially with things like a single console to manage everything instead of five or 10 or 15. Automate as much as you can. Automated user provisioning is great. Automatic group management, right? There's as many groups typically as you have users nowadays, and you can set rules and let the system govern itself. Self-service with guardrails to protect people from themselves. And then a big challenge and a change from on-premise AD and office to the cloud model is that they do enforcement of licensing at the user level with checkboxes, and that can be a nightmare. So you want to really make sure you kind of keep an eye on what people are using in their licenses. Can you go to a less expensive license and then maybe use that cash that you save at the end of the year to maybe move additional workloads to the cloud or find other solutions for things that remain on premise? In terms of security, you want to definitely make sure you're using role-based access control. Now that exists in Azure to a point. It's not granular enough to really be used for granting uh, simple permissions for things like just reset a password or, or what have you. There, there are some permissions that let you do simple things like that. 
but it just isn't granular enough at an enterprise scale and it doesn't have anything to do with on-premise and so it makes it very difficult to ensure that you have granular enough permissions and follow a least privileged delegation model so that people don't have too much power within your environment. You want to follow a model of least privilege and really manage not just your user accounts, but the people who are managing the user accounts very, very strictly, very carefully. You want to really watch those privileged identities to make sure that they're not off doing things that they shouldn't. And again, another way to improve security is take the human element out, automate where you can, automate group memberships, role memberships, automate provisioning of users and deprovisioning of users. And that also not only makes it more efficient, but you get better security because it's a repeatable process all the time. Next is monitoring. We're talking about change monitoring. And on the other side of that coin is really not just looking for changes, but looking for other types of threats that you may have missed that may already be there, right? So it's easy to see somebody deleting a user or deleting a group or changing group memberships or modifying a conditional access policy because there's an actual change we can look for there. And while not all those things are logged with event logs, there are methods that you can use to see everything. And so there are solutions there that go well beyond scene tools, well beyond event log tools, et cetera. But then you have threats and those may be risks that are in the environment, for example, because you have a server that's unpatched or a setting in Active Directory has not been updated as it should be in general maintenance of the Active Directory platform. And those may lead to an exposed risk that would allow an attacker to take the next step in a threat chain, right? So you want to be careful there to not just look for changes, but look for static things that may not be configured correctly, may be configured incorrectly, And then there's also sort of another piece, which is if somebody's already attacked you, they could go back and start to clean up what they changed to get to that attack. And they may fix the problems so that you don't see that they were actually a problem. So there may be other indicators that show that you actually were already attacked. And those are not just exposures. Those are indicators that you've been attacked. And so change monitoring isn't all that you need to do. You need to do threat detection in addition to change monitoring. And you need it to alert you on specific changes. So, you know, if the CEO's account gets changed or the accounting department's access levels are changed, new accounts created, removed, new devices, et cetera. People are changing security policies. You want to watch for those things. And that doesn't just go for Azure and AD. It could be in Teams also, right? So one of the settings in Teams is allow external users, meaning external to my organization or guest users, to modify content or create Teams. We don't want that. That's crazy. You know, they might be able to access the information, but we don't want them introducing an application that might be a bug or some sort of virus or something. And so these solutions on change monitoring really need to look at everything, not just Azure AD, not just AD, but you need to look at the control plane that both of those provide. And you want to do it in a way so that those changes have a minimum impact if they are inappropriate or unwanted changes. So you need to identify them quickly and prioritize them. It may save your environment from an attack, so you can make corrective action on exposed risks before they're exploited. And again, if you have a scene tool or you have an event auditing tool, I'm not saying you shouldn't keep those. I think they're a good first step, but they have a bunch of holes in them. You need to have a supplemental solution or an overall solution that fills in the problems that those have. You can keep using them. It doesn't really make a difference as long as you're seeing all changes including changes that may be made by Microsoft to the environment that may not be logged so that you know what's going on. You really need a complete view. And there really are no tools from Microsoft that provide that. So the final area is really recovery. And there are two sides to that coin. There's just the basic object recovery, right? So, you know, somebody goes in, writes a script and erases everyone's email addresses or clears out every group membership or updates a group membership incorrectly for the licenses on Microsoft, for example, or access to an app. You need some way to roll those things back. What's interesting to me is that was a change that hopefully your change system detected, recorded, and now you see, hey, that's an inappropriate change. Hopefully that solution also has the ability to roll those changes back. So dealing with the most likely cause of an outage of some sort is changes to the data that's inappropriate. The other side of that is what happens if my entire active directory is lost, the entire forest on-premise goes out. And that's a pretty serious problem because there's nothing from Microsoft other than guidance to sort of tell you, well, this is what you should do. Here's the procedure. I want to say there's 
you know, for doing one domain, there's a couple hundred steps and you really need to get lucky. And hopefully you have a server that didn't get hit with the ransomware or didn't get the corrupt data. And a lot of times people will try to use a lag server, but what they don't realize is those lag servers now, you know, that stuff was synchronized to Azure AD. And so there's a bunch of stuff missing, probably the last two days, three days worth of changes that are missing. Imagine if those were the security updates and guess what? The lag server is the target now, right? And because it wasn't updated the same as the other servers. And there are recovery tools out there, but you gotta be a little careful with those because almost all of them require that you recover and actually try to go through a recovery process after the catastrophe of the directory being lost has happened. That is the worst time when all your management's screaming at you and your folks on the ground, you know, your employees are screaming at you and your vendors and your customers. You're at the focal point of all those problems. That's the worst time to have to hit the button and pray that the recovery actually worked. And so you should look at solutions that don't use traditional server backups. These are your Veeams, your Com Vaults. They're not going to work because they get the entire operating system and that's where the infections happen, right? That's where the ransomware lurk and has the problem. A lot of people now are finding that their cyber insurance, that's the amount that the attacker is trying to extort them for. And so organizations are now saying, hey, we're going to be prepared. We're never going to, you know, we're never going to negotiate with, with hackers. So we got to do something different. But you need to be able to instantly or as close to instantly as possible get your Active Directory back. And you need it to be simple because when all that stuff is hitting the fan, the last thing you want to find out is that your, your forest recovery has failed because a driver was updated or the servers are you know different versions or what have you. You need something that guarantees recovery. And, and unfortunately, neither Microsoft nor other, other vendors out there really do that. So just a quick comparison. These are a couple of vendors that I, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard from. Quest Software has some really good management tools. I should know. I helped build a lot of those um, and left when Dell acquired Quest. Um, they do have some hybrid management capability. Unfortunately, you have to buy really four tools uh, to, to get a, a complete, just, just on the management piece. And, and again, it's still missing quite a bit there. There's no single console management and, you know, again, four tools with a partial solution for automation around governance. Semperis, which has the change monitoring, hybrid uh, Active Directory change monitoring and some of the recovery, they don't have any management tools. So you're not going to get a one-stop one choice there. Chaosoft, we um, uh, do have that. Let's talk about monitoring a little bit. So Quest, again, nine different tools you'd have to install uh, to cover your hybrid Active Directory environment. Some are on-premise, on servers, some are in the cloud. You have to then go through this dance to configure a console. Um, and unfortunately, it's event data only. And so, you know, if, it, if that's the first attack is to blind the uh, administrators by killing the event data, you're out of luck there, right? So event data isn't the best. You should collect it. Um, and it's great for secondary information and some primary information, but it shouldn't be what you rely on the, the entire time. Um, they, you know, Quest does have a change auditing tool. Uh, some Paris has a change auditing tool as well. It's very similar to what Chaosoft provides. Um, I think we, we are a little more extensive and expansive. Um, and uh, this slide isn't quite right. They do a little bit more than event data, but it's primarily event-based. Uh, we do multi-source. Um, we do direct observation of all change. So we see everything. And then we correlate with events uh, and system settings. And we definitely see hybrid changes in one single view. Um, for Quest, you don't have a single view. And for, for Semperis, they do Azure AD, to some extent, they do Active Directory and Group Policy just like we do, but they don't do much around Office, and we, we include that as well. So you're really getting three or four tools in one tool from, from Chaosoft there. And then finally, let's talk about recovery. Um, the first thing about forest recovery, that's the big one, right? Because that's the, the one that takes out your environment and the one everybody worries about. Uh, with Quest, it's going to take you maybe a half day, a day. You know, you can really get it down to hours, but there's no guarantee it's going to work because you don't try to do the recovery until you have an outage. 
exactly the same situation with some Paris. Could be an hour, could be nine hours, could be a day, could be a week. If your recovery fails, again, no way to know. You can certainly try to test. And you know, we worked with Gartner to do a survey, and it it turns only it turns out about 20% um, of uh, Active Directory owners test uh, as frequently as they should. Right? Some people don't ever test, and so testing is is hey, we don't we're not sure it's going to work, so let's do some testing. You know, six months goes by, drivers change, the backups are bad, you don't know. Suddenly you try to do it and it's it's blown out. We have something called instant recovery. It takes a couple minutes, maybe. Uh, it can actually be, you know, maybe just a couple of seconds. And we do it by pre-recovering the environment, making it fully fault tolerant, uh, a clone of your environment in Azure or AWS. Um, and then when uh, the worst happens, you just simply redirect all your login traffic over across Express Route or whatever other system you have integrated with those platforms to log into domain controllers in the cloud. Um, we also have something called smart recovery, and that simply means uh, once we do the recovery, we know what additional changes may have been since since we created the backups. Um, it also, and, and we'll apply those, but it also means we only get Active Directory components. We check those for viruses and things like that. We're not taking the server along uh, so we don't get, you know, a corruption that's at the operating system level. Um, and you can do this every night. You could have a, a fault tolerant forest every night built. And the cost is extremely low because of the, the licensing models that the cloud vendors have. Uh, so you don't have to go out and buy hardware. And you don't have to pre-allocate a bunch of uh, VMware licenses or Microsoft um, VM licenses. Uh, you only really need to to uh, pay for those things when you, when and if you I would say when not if but when you you know get hit with ransomware and you need to use it and then finally we all do object restore unfortunately um, on the quest side it really takes again four or five tools to get it all done so by the time you get done quest simply had the best tools in the 2000s I know I helped build them and and we really did very very well. Um, but when you have all those customers, uh, it makes it harder to change because the chances you'll disrupt a customer are pretty pretty high. And that generation of tools was so tightly integrated with the on-premise Active Directory, it just simply couldn't envision anything else and has absolutely no use in the cloud. And so they have sort of a Frankenstein model where they start to bolt on applications. Um, I will give Semperis credit. Um, they they have two tools, uh, one for forest recovery and one for change auditing. Seems kind of weird that you got to buy change auditing and recovery of objects separate from recovery for your directory. I don't understand that exactly. Um, and they do have a good uh, threat detection tool, which again, another tool you got to install uh, called Purple Knight. And I think they have another one that they're working on. Again, with us, you have one administration installation or one administration tool and one uh, change auditing, object recovery, uh, and uh, forest recovery solution that covers both on-premise and cloud, uh, full hybrid. So that administration tool is Chaosoft Administrator. Just wanted to mention it. Uh, there are lots of goodness here. It's a single console, fully built to do hybrid management, uh, it's so um, so thought well thought out, I believe. You know, my business partner did the architecture, I didn't. But you can actually turn off on-premise Active Directory and continue to use the tool to manage cloud Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, and Office only. So it gives you a great opportunity. It can be run, you know, in the cloud or it can be run on-premise. So you get to choose wherever you have the least expensive model. Uh, lots of people have VMware licenses and on-premise licenses still that they're committed to. Lots of bandwidth there. It's just going to waste. Why not use that? Don't pay consumption if you don't have to, but if you want to use the cloud model, you have it available to you. Complete automation from user provisioning, group management. We do also offer self-service that is uh, hybrid, meaning they can, you know, people can manage their uh, application data owners can manage their group memberships on premise and in cloud. People can request access. Uh, we do have just in time access also, and we do have uh, privileged identity uh, management, again, not just in the cloud, but across both on-premise Active Directory uh, and uh, uh, cloud Active Directory and Office. The second 
tool uh, is called Guardian from Chaosoft. This is change monitoring to, to monitor for suspect changes. And we do this again a little bit differently than anybody else. We're doing direct observation of change, uh, plus doing event log collection, plus we're running threat detection in the background as well. And you know the the first two is pretty easy. You can create a threat, or sorry, create a, something you want to look for in terms of a change. Throw an alert. Those alerts all come into Teams, or you can have them sent by email. But Teams is what we use internally. And it's pretty nice because as I'm working along, if I go add a user, I can jump over to Teams, see the alert, and right then and there just say, hey, this is me. I just did this for you know, onboarding Tony. Um, uh, and the other administrators, you know, we have a constant then feed that uh, we can comment on. It's great. And then they can come back and say, well, I already created Tony's account. And then you go make another change, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it gives you full change monitoring and a much uh, more visibility than you're going to get either from native tools, your seam tool, or any event log auditing tools. Uh, plus, you got this cool Teams integration, which gives you instant feedback on what, what's going on in your environment. Uh, in addition to the threat detection, we also, sorry, in addition to the change monitoring and, rec and rollback of changes to objects and attributes, we also uh, have uh, threat detection built in. Basically, we're looking for risks that were from a misconfiguration or a neglected configuration uh, or uh, indication that you've already been compromised. So indicators of attack and indicators of risk are the two things that we're looking for. And we provide pretty extensive documentation on what it means when a finding is, you know, occurs and, and suggested resources that you can use to try and unwind that issue or fix or resolve the issue, as well as a link to our partner community that gives you, you know, hardcore security uh, groups that um, can help you if you've been, you know, for example, attacked. Uh, maybe you have an advanced persistent threat that you find in your environment. Somebody's in there, they're lurking, they haven't done anything yet, and you want to recover from that. We actually have a methodology for doing that, and we would recommend you get one of our security partners to to help with it. Um, and then finally, you know, this this is definitely part of that manage, monitor, recover, uh, because it provides the second leg of the three critical legs in Active Directory and hybrid Active Directory management, which are the manage, monitor, recover. Um, but it's not complete until we go one more step, uh, which is we also need to be able to recover not just the object attributes and, and undeletes, things like that. We need to be able to recover an entire forest. And we need to do it in the absolute guaranteed way it's going to happen and as fast as possible. And so we have a extension. It's actually just a, a license change. Uh, to the Guardian basic product or base product that gives you Guardian for a full forest recovery. And this gives you full identity resilience along with the base Guardian uh, threat detection, change monitoring, uh, alerting, and then administrators, administrative model to protect uh, from people inside, people outside, and looking for risks that uh, your environment currently is carrying and you want to get rid of. So. This one uses what we call standby forest. This is a patented technology. Um, I was in the room when forest recovery at Quest was sort of invented. It's a long story. If you're interested, contact me. I'm happy to send you a link to the story. Um, and it was very painful, uh, the first two or three that, that we watched happen. And uh, you know the, the processes and procedures that Quest and some Paris use for their forest recovery are basically that same technology from 2005 or 2004. And it hasn't changed. They've just, you know, they try to improve it, make it a little bit faster, more reliable, but they didn't fundamentally change the architecture. And we have fundamentally changed the architecture by using what we call standby forest. So each and every night we can go out and create a new forest that is available and we do it in a way that it's protected from any kind of compromise that might happen uh, on premise. We do support Amazon and we support um, uh, Azure for the virtual machines um, you, to recover. It's already done. You just have to change your network routing uh, for the traffic and uh, you don't have to rebuild DCs after a cyber attack. Now we also provide the ability to, to, to recover DCs from backup onto physical hardware or onto on-premise hardware as well. So you get the most, best, best of both worlds. We don't just do one or the other. Instant recovery is what we call this. It's smart. 
Uh, we roll back a series of deletions uh, or changes to uh, information in addition to a forest recovery. We do fully cover group policy. So if you've heard somebody say we don't do group policy, that's malarkey. Um, and it's all in one solution. You don't have to go off and buy two or three things or nine things. It's all in one. And, and we do have a bundle that contains all these called the Chaosoft Enterprise Suite. Um, if you're only interested in the first two, then we have uh, just the first two in a, in a management and protection suite. So we're very flexible on licensing and we're very equitable. Um, we're not here to gouge you. We're really here to uh, provide a solid uh, solution at a price that you think is fair and that we think is fair uh, so that we maintain your, your trust and you renew your subscription next year because we are subscription based, we're not perpetual based. Proof is in the pudding, 99% customer attention over the past three to five years. Our support gets a four and a half out of five. <laughs> Excuse me. Average response on our support cases when they come in is about an hour and you know, 20 minutes or so. Um, five year revenue growth, we're exploding in terms of size and growth. I'm very proud of my team here, 480% uh, growth, 317% uh, just in the development headcount. Um, and 310% overall for all employees. And I expect that within the next 12 months, these numbers will be small uh, in comparison to what we have uh, in the works for uh, the second half of 2023 and the remainder of 2024. With this, I'm gonna turn it back over to McKenna. Thank you, McKenna, for, for getting us launched. And I'll let her talk about the, uh, the upcoming demo. Thanks, Bob. All right, so as you can see on your screen, we do have a demo on the same topic coming up next week. So feel free to get signed up for that. You can visit chaosoft.com backslash events. So that concludes our presentation today. We'd like to thank everyone for their time and hope you enjoyed the webinar. You'll see on the screen a few quick links for the Chaosoft website. Should you have any additional questions, you can visit kosoft.com forward slash question. If you'd like to schedule a personalized demo or get our free trial, you'll see those links here as well. We also have that QR code on the screen again that you can scan with your phone's camera and it'll take you directly to the demo request page. And of course, for more information in general about Chaosoft or our solution, feel free to visit kosoft.com. Again, thank you so much and have a great day.